When starting NetPoint or creating a new document, the Schedule Properties window will open automatically. The first thing you'll notice is that the window is divided into four tabs, Properties, Dates, Displays, and Formatting. You'll encounter this layout often throughout the interface. Let's start by giving our new plan a title. You can control whether or not it shows up on the canvas in the Displays tab. Next, let's define the date range. To do that, we'll go to the Dates tab. The calendar dates will default to 6 months before and 12 months after today's current date. These correspond with the left and rightmost edges of the canvas. They determine the maximum possible range in which the project itself can take place. The project dates will default to just inside the calendar dates. These are the actual dates your project will start and finish and will be used in drift and float calculations. If you adjust the calendar dates, you can use the autofill button to fit the project dates automatically within the calendar range. If polytime has been enabled, you'll also be able to choose between time units. You can learn more about these options in the polytime tutorial. Once the schedule is set, you can customize the look of the canvas. You may have noticed a set of rulers at the top and a set of lines running vertically. These are the calendar strips and sight lines and they represent the time scale for drawing activities. You can turn these on and off in the Displays tab of the Schedule Properties window. To get back to the Schedule Properties at any time, click Schedule in the menu bar and choose Modify Settings. Depending on the length of your project and the current page size, it may take some trial and error to find a good combination. Since our project is short, we'll show months and weeks instead of years. In the Formatting tab, you can also change options like the color of the calendar strips or the background color of the canvas. We'll leave them default for now. Next, let's change the size of the canvas. To change it, go to File, then Print Setup. When creating a new schedule, the page size will always default to letter. Choosing a larger or smaller page size will permanently stretch or shrink the canvas both on screen as well as when it's printed. If the duration of your project is really long or if it's difficult to read when printed, the plan can be tiled across multiple pages. This option is found under File, then Page Setup. Pages may be added horizontally and vertically. We recommend choosing a page size and tiling combination suitable for print and keeping it fixed and then using the zoom and stretch controls to enhance readability on screen. To adjust the zoom or stretch factors, click the icon in the toolbar. As you can see, the zoom function magnifies or shrinks the canvas proportionally. The stretch function increases or decreases the horizontal width of the canvas. Unlike the page size, zooming and stretching is only temporary. It has no effect on the printed page and the zoom and stretch will reset when the file is printed or saved and closed. The last feature we'll cover is grid spacing. Grid spacing is essentially the distance between consecutive grid lines. Let's take a look. The grid spacing is found in the formatting tab of the Schedule Properties window. The default grid spacing of 0.5 inches allows for three lines of text to be displayed for each activity. This could be a single line description plus the duration and float block or a two-line description with just the duration. A grid spacing smaller than 0.5 will reduce the amount of text that can be displayed unless activities are placed one or more grid lines apart. When setting up a schedule, a lot of options are available for configuring the plan. We've covered the most important to help you get started. This has been a basic look at setting up a schedule. Thanks for watching.